So my grandfather was uh, went to Annapolis class in 1928. So he actually was the same year as Darren Chris's character, Eugene Lindsay. So, you know, I kind of grew up, some kids grew up with comic books. I grew up with the Navy. I'd flip through, you know, as I was growing up. And I have to say that it was enormously impactful to be able to come out here and shoot at Pearl Harbor. You know, we've, it was the first two weeks of shooting. And to, you know, have the crew driving past the Arizona as they're coming into work, I think, I think it set the right tone and made everyone appreciate that this was a, an important story and one that we needed to tell correctly. Well, um, you know, when I heard that the movie comes out uh, on Veterans, uh, Veterans Day, uh, I was really happy about that because uh, in a weird way, what we wanted to do with this movie, kind of put a monument to these more or less unsung heroes because uh, uh, most of the, the pilots, you know, we like kind of portray are not like in the, in the you know, like kind of not, you know, very well known. So, and you know, to, you, you make a movie like this, so, so these, uh, their bravery doesn't, isn't forgotten. That's, uh, and then the Veterans Day has like kind of some sort of a, um, you know, a, a good feel for this movie. There is no better time for a story like Midway to be seen by younger generations because it's the ultimate generation that we can say thank you to for living in freedom and in democracy. If these kids, which they were, wouldn't have defied their own lives and most of them knew that they were not going to come back and they did all this for future generations and I think now we're living at a time where that kind of patriotism is dearly missing all around us. I think it's also important to remember that, you know, we didn't just make this movie to honor the people who served in 1942, it's also to honor the people who continue to serve. And we've lived in an environment where we've had military serving on the front lines for, you know, it's been almost two decades now. And a lot of the time we forget that. So this movie is a reminder of, you know, not just the service members in the past, but those who continue to serve our country. What we like kind of forget uh, is uh, America didn't want to get into the war. And because of the attack on Pearl Harbor, then they uh, willingly did. And, but they were not really quite prepared enough. So in a way, you know, um, you know uh, when like kind of Nimitz came to uh, Pearl Harbor, he had to really rise this, uh, um, the spirits of people and, like kind of, uh, and tell them, yes, we can do it. And, um, and he, uh, you know, and I think uh, he was like a good leader that way, you know, that he didn't like kind of uh, scold people, that he didn't say like, oh, you, uh, you know, like kind of uh, screwed up Pearl Harbor, you know, for example, this Navy uh, uh, intelligence officer, Edwin Layton, you know, he like kind of wanted to actually leave uh, and go on a, on a ship. And he said, no, your place has to be here. Uh, you are like kind of uh, there. You can do much more than in, uh, in uh, uh, in the war effort, so so he was like a. Uh, there was a. The, the Americans were really the underdog, you know, and we forget that, you know, that they were the underdogs. I think from a movie entertainment kind of story, or angle, which obviously, whenever you make a movie of this size, you don't want to make a gigantic history lesson. So from the entertainment level of this all and the, the storytelling and, and, and the ride you go on here is that this is probably the biggest underdog story in the history of World War II. I wouldn't know where else, you know, a few people who believed in their cause were going up against such an overwhelming uh, uh, enemy and uh, just because, you know, their spirits were high, because their leaders were courageous when all those things came together they kind of were able to pull off the impossible and that's why we live in freedom or one of the big reasons why we live in freedom and democracy in our uh, country here right now when these guys were talking about how to frame the movie they were always i, I thought it'd just be about the battle of midway and they pointed out it should begin with pearl harbor because as you know, Harold was just saying, this is the greatest military comeback story, I think, in history, that you frame it with the darkest day in American history, which is, you know, what, the attack on Pearl Harbor. And just six months later, you have this event that turns the tide of the war. So how did that happen? And that's what the story of the movie is.
Well, it's because uh, <laughs> it shaped all of our lives. Everybody who is here on this island, who is in this state, in this country, their lives have been altered through World War II. M many people lost uh, incredible uh, uh, losses in family members. Others were dislocated. I don't think there's anybody wandering on, on uh, our streets these days who hasn't been kind of influenced by uh, the outcomings of uh, World War II and that's such a monumental event in our history so that's why we keep looking back at it and discovering new angles to understand what happened to the world in those days. It's been very powerful as I talk to people about the movie often they it's kind of an impetus for them to talk to their own grandparents or parents or great-grandparents about what they did and you know what was so fascinating about going out and seeing the RV petrol and the work they've done to find the Kaga is realizing that this is first of all historically important it's going to help answer questions about this battle but also this really that's hallowed ground there are 400 men who went down on that ship and in a place like Japan that is so you know so interested in their ancestors to find this and be able to tell those families that we know what happened to your great grandparents your grandparents I think it, I'm very glad that the movie was able to be part of something like that Well, there's, uh, there's something uh, in this movie, you know, which I think uh, people haven't seen. It's dive bombing. And, you know, and uh, when I, uh, you know, like kind of designed these scenes, you know, we always like kind of said, uh, how can, could have people done that, you know? Today, you know, we use like missiles to do that. Uh, in that day, there was like a, a man or two men sitting in a plane flying, you know, down on a ship, which was... Uh, and got shot at, you know, and it, the bravery to do something like that is just like incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm most excited for people to see the cast, frankly. You know, Roland's always been so great about assembling ensemble casts, and the challenge of this movie is there's so many stories that we wanted to tell because there's so many angles, and you know, they're kind of three major storylines we're following. And it was so inspiring to show up to set every day and see these actors who had done so much research. They're showing up, you know, sometimes with the biographies of their characters or, you know, Woody had gone to, you know, see the Nimitz Museum. I think he felt a personal connection because of the tie to Texas and had been on an aircraft carrier. So they all showed up and brought something really unique to the roles. And I think that meant a lot to all of us. And for me, the most exciting <laughs> thing is that I'm, I'm really kind of proud being part of this movie because... I feel this is one of the first uh, epic war films where both sides are treated as equal, you know, participants in a global conflict. And uh, I really have to say, when, when, when I started, I was a little worried about the whole situation that we're doing again. The Japanese are the bad guys, we're the good guys. And uh, the outcome of this film, for me, the most exciting part is that I actually walk out of here and say, we've done, or Roland has done, and obviously Wes, uh, we've done kind of justice as best as we could to, to paint a picture of this is kind of how it went down. Well, when you, when you see how uh, nationalism is rising all over the world, um, you know, like fascist parties, especially in Europe, uh, you like kind of get sometimes afraid, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, like a, a conflict like World War II could happen again. And then it's great that in a time of that, you remind people with a movie, you know, that there were, you know, uh, not so long ago, uh, people like, you know, like risking their life to fight for democracy and freedom. And in our like kind of uh, times of, especially in, in America with all of the, the vision which happens, you know, uh, uh, and is existing. It's great to see what a unified America can do and how actually Amer without America, this world would like kind of look totally different. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's always uh, uh, great to see uh, actors uh, at their finest, you know, and I think in this movie, Especially, we had like uh, actors which all you know gave their their most, you know, and on top of it, this was a very very uh, uh, you know uh, nice group of people, you know. It's this uh, 
it's it's always like kind of it sounds like kind of maybe silly, but uh, when you shoot a movie, you know, uh, Kurt Russell once said this to me. You know, when we like kind of uh, watch a movie, you know, uh, we cannot watch our own movies because we only like kind of see the hardship and uh, and um, <coughs> and uh, the little mistakes we make, but. Uh, we can uh, have like fun making movies, you know, and that's our like kind of, uh, that's always like my ideal now, you know, my, what I'm always going for, uh, trying to kind of find a group which really fits together and, uh, and kind of tries to make a good movie. It was like shooting multiple movies also because of the storyline. So you get, yeah. get kind of actors for a couple weeks and then move to the next set of actors. So it was, it was almost like they're running a camp. And then the final movie was Roland making his independent Japanese film, which was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also its own challenges and but really special. It's also inspiring to see not only uh, directors, uh, actors at their finest, it's, uh, it's also inspiring to see a, a director at his, at his finest putting all these pieces uh, together sometimes i would be standing there and thinking like what is why is he do like ah okay now i understand this is all going to be part of a huge tapestry of a huge uh, massive image uh, composition and, and to to see somebody working his world with such ease too many compliments uh, <laughs> with such ease and, and, and knowing what he's doing, uh, that's uh, for me sometimes on the sideline a true joy, I have to say. And the production design. To walk on set every day was fascinating. I mean, the work that they did, it, you're recreating these environments and making sure that everything in front of the camera was historically accurate. I mean, we're talking about Japanese carriers that have been under the sea since 1942. What, what do they look like? What it's like to be on that bridge? And the research they did and to make sure that you know, I as a child try to imagine what these things were like, and you couldn't, you simply couldn't. You had to use your imagination. You're trying to just, you know, you're reading a paragraph. We had no idea. And to see it so vividly brought to life by Roland and then that incredible team behind them was, I think, for any history buff, just, it was like being at Disney World.